How's it going, everybody? Ding Gibbs here. We are on. We're do, we're not doing a series right now. We will be. I'll start up another one soon. If anybody's got any suggestions, throw that on the bottom. But today, this is how we could build a moon base today. I mean, I saw the title and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch that whether or not I'm making a reaction to it. So figured I'd react to it. Um, it's only 9:57. The link will be in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the uh, creator, which is. In a nutshell, Kurzgazigt, Kursig, Kursagd, so, whatever. I'm gonna hit play, and we're gonna jump on in. Let's get it. Humans dream about leaving Earth and traveling through the galaxy, but we were born too early to be part of it, or were we? I doubt it. We're being pretty close. We could begin our dream by building a moon base today. We actually do have the technology. And current estimates from NASA and the private sector say it could be done for 20 to 40 billion dollars spread out over about a decade. It's not even like an insane amount. International Space Station or the budget surplus of Germany in 2017. Not that big an investment, really. Exactly. The payoff would be immeasurable. The moon is a sandbox to develop new technologies and exploit unlimited resources. It would start a new space race and lay the foundation for us to spread out into the solar system and beyond. Yes. Create a vast array the moon's of not a big like. Benefit us on Earth. There's not a lot there, but it's good training ground. So why aren't we doing it? Well, sadly, it's hard to get governments interested in long-term investments in the future of humanity. I, I let's imagine. Elect me, base. man. We'll have a moon base. If we start today, how would we build a moon base? That'd be a job, you know, work on the moon. I'm, yeah, I'm building the moon base. I'll be gone for the next nine months. ...happened in phases. In the first phase of the age of exploration of the New World, for example, European monarchs funded expeditions to chart and discover and to stake their claims. They planted a flag and set up a camp, but they didn't stay. In the second phase, small missions set up out... Oh, yeah, true. ...settlements were founded, which were still very dependent on their home countries for supplies. Some failed, but others survived and established a permanent presence. This is a good way to put it. In the third phase, did a true colony form to which tradesmen and laborers could emigrate, creating new wealth and opportunities for themselves and their families, sending extreme wealth back to their countries of origin. When yeah. we colonize the moon, we'll go through the same three phases. This time, phase one's already over. Millions of innocent people in the process. Maybe. The moon is not a welcoming place for living things. A moon day lasts 29 Earth days, with a difference of nearly 300 degrees Celsius between sunlight and shade. Holy shit. There's no atmosphere to shield us from meteorites, big and small, or cosmic radiation. Worse still, the lunar surface is covered in a layer of nasty, jagged dust. The moon is hard, but we're good at doing hard things. In the first phase, yeah, I hear it's like 80% titanium or something. It can be done, that a new world can be reached. This phase started 60 years ago with the Apollo missions. Since then, satellites like the American Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have mapped the moon, while rovers like the Chinese Yutu have studied the composition of the lunar surface, looking for water, ice, and metals. Phase 1 is more or less complete. We know what we need to know to enter phase 2. In the second phase, astronauts will build the first moon base, and this could begin today. The first small moon base could be completed in a decade. The first nation that establishes this base will be akin to the first nations building outposts in the New World 500 years ago. Hell yeah, and they will it's be attacked. To send rockets to the moon. It could definitely so be a fight up there. As little as possible. The base will be light, little more than inflatable habitats for crews of no more than 12, and will be deployed somewhere with a natural shelter. Options include caves, like underground lava tube tunnels, or craters near the poles where the days are six months long. Yeah, we're gonna set up in a lava tube. Will not stay long. What? The habitat is likely to be abandoned between missions, as solar panels cannot generate electricity during the lunar night. But they'll do the groundwork to enable humans to stay permanently. Our first crew will consist of scientists and engineers who will study the composition of the moon and whose experiments will explore ways of using the available lunar material, say, purifying lunar ice and turning it into water for human use. 
And water is important for far more than drinking. They can use it to experiment with growing plants for food. Hydrogen fuel cells will store power through the long night, extending astronaut stays. Are they going to need carpenters? Importantly, it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen. Rocket fuel. Build your house. By harvesting water from the moon and putting it into orbit, the moon base will supply an orbital depot where scientific missions to Mars and the outer solar system can refuel. Compared to the Earth, it's much easier and cheaper to get things off the moon into orbit. Hell yeah! Earth has a bunch of trash around it. If you look it up, look up the satellites and the trash around Earth. It's almost like too much to where we can't even take our ships off Earth. Because it'll crash, you know, going up. There's a ton of shit. Into a true colony, it must become self-sufficient, supporting itself via exports to Earth. Now, private contractors arrive, looking to get rich off lunar resources and Hell yeah. services. That's what I would do. To produce rocket fuel in space, what else can they get rich on? They could extract precious metals, abundant in impact craters, and other raw materials from the lunar regolith. Yeah, you don't know what's going to be in those impact craters. The possibility is the mining of helium-3, an isotope that could one day be used in nuclear fusion reactors, something the Chinese lunar exploration program is currently looking into. That's always good. Future colonists may export helium-3 back to Earth, providing us with cheap and clean fusion energy. Asteroids could be pulled into the moon's orbit and mined. But it's dangerous. With commercial exports to Earth, the colony is fully in its third phase, self-sufficient and economically productive. Our base will begin using lunar material in its construction projects if it's to continue growing. Fortunately, lunar soil has all the necessary ingredients to make concrete. Yeah. Robotic mining rigs can sift the lunar dust for organic molecules and could be used to build huge structures way too massive to be brought from Earth. When are you going to start One planting trees? 3D printing will make it possible to produce almost everything else the crews need. R2-D2? What about trees, though? When exactly the colony becomes self-sustaining. Growth is gradual. Experiments are replaced by industry. Yeah, they need a blender. Steadily reaches the hundreds, encompassing more than just scientists. Engineers, pilots, and contractors representing countries and corporations will be present. Two of these people will make a breakthrough. Not scientific, but social. They will have the first extraterrestrial child. Oh! In history, the birth of the first child was celebrated as a moment where the seed of a colony finally and irreversibly took root. Here, it means that the moon is not just a place for scientists and engineers to work. Won't that kid be all fucked up, though? Because the no gravity thing, like his bones and stuff, happens, the colony grows they'll be rapidly, weaker. Building more habitats and schools and farms and all the things needed to support the growing population. As our colony grows, all kinds of new technologies. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I don't think you can just walk on Earth. They might develop crops that efficiently recycle carbon dioxide or that grow with very little water. They might find ways to recycle and reuse 100% of their waste, technologies that are extremely valuable for Earth. They could even build the first space elevator in the solar system. Oh, that won't be that hard. Space elevator, spacecraft, astronauts, and raw materials could be brought back and forth from lunar orbit without needing to use rockets. It'd be so easy to build. The moon may become a hub for economic activity on a scale that's hard to imagine right now. It's hard to say who will own Although, how does it all stay up there while the, it rotates the like that, to too? Take the national identity of their parents, or will a new generation melt together into a new lunar society? And when existing treaties that bar any nation from owning the moon are inevitably rewritten, will the colonists yeah. be given a say? No. Nah. Will they declare independence from the Earth? However, yeah, then what? You get attacked? It's a perfect sandbox to learn how to colonize the solar system, the perfect project. Yeah, there'd be a nuclear way instead of a fucking way to guarantee team of astronauts. As a species, should something tragic happen on Earth. If we ever want to colonize the Milky Way, we'll have to start somewhere. So, why not start there? Why not start now? I don't know why not. I don't know why that nobody's jumping on that. While unfortunately you can't jump on a spacecraft and go to the moon oh. right now, you can learn more interesting things about space and our universe. Yeah, you can at that website. If you guys all want to click it in, you can see it. I'm looking at the screen right now. <laughs> but I'm not going to 
keep going with this video. It's just paid fucking shit. But yeah, that's cool. I just I just saw this video and I definitely am interested about in anything with uh, space travel. If I was like the president or something, I'd definitely be looking at something like that. I know Trump said something about a space army. I feel like space or a moon base would be step one on that too. I don't know. I don't. I think it'd be cool. Bill Gates could afford it. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Then he then it'd be his technically too. All whatever they build. But all in all, guys, I enjoyed the video and I hope you did too. I'm going to head out on that note, Bears game tonight. Wish me luck on that, and I'll catch you all later. If you have anything for me to react to, throw it in below. And I'm going to be starting a series that if you have any suggestions, throw that as well. But with that being said, I'm going to head out. Peace.